side looking over her left shoulder, or that side looking right. Okay. Right. So I'm sat here in carriage 23. Um, this carriage was built by Ashbury's in 1894 uh, has done many years on the top end of the Welsh Highland sets of carriages so obviously it was right next to the locomotive coming one way or the other um, we'd noticed for a few years that this this end panel work here was starting to bow inwards quite badly and it got to the point where it was starting to cause a real concern for the way the door locks worked so we took the opportunity this winter to bring it in um, and it's had this whole section cut out and a complete new framework put in. Uh, this obviously showed up a number of problems, as it always does. Um, we'd got lots of rot down at the bottom of the door sill area and we had to basically rebuild all that up uh, at the same time as putting the new oak framing in. Uh, we've reskinned it with um, new new timber, which is called Tricoya. This is similar to MDF, but um, it's resilient to water. Carriage Twenty One was done with that a few years ago, and it's amazing stuff. Um, gives a very good finish. As I said, it's stable and and doesn't rot. So that's what we've chosen for this. This carriage has also had to have. Uh, substantial work on the doors particularly down at the door door bottoms down here uh, water coming in through the top of the window going down has caused substantial rot on some of these joints around here so they've all been looked at and obviously the doors have been planed or adjusted to fit into the openings correctly uh, and the carriage has had a full repaint at the same time so substantial rub down several coats of um, undercoat top coat and varnish and, uh, and the carriage is now just about ready to leave the workshop. So this carriage obviously is a, there's a lot of original material still in it, um, a lot of this framework barring the new section of course is some of the original framework from its original construction um, and, and at some point in the early preservation era the tongue and groove boarding got to such a poor state they just took it off and put standard panels on the mouldings when it was restored back to its present condition um, it was never never had the number put back onto it so we found a number of picture on number of pictures on ibase that show welsh highland carriages with a number down in the corner in black so we've decided this time around to put the number back onto it for the first time in 20 plus years. Um, obviously, most people have not noticed the number has been missing. So. <laughs> Um, so this one is carriage 26, uh, this is a, well this, this body on this carriage dates from 1986 I believe this one. Uh, it's made of Jarra, which was the favourite wood of the time. Um, obviously we've learnt that it's, although it's in theory durable, it actually in practice it hasn't worked out that way. It's got a few design problems with this carriage and the sister carriage of 22 which is built in the same style uh, in that the aluminium here that holds the windows in is just a sheet piece of aluminium and it's let into a groove in the carriage which was put in place as the carriage was being assembled. Um, as the problem with that is that we can't actually remove the aluminium to reseal the aluminium to the wood 
uh, and the sealant from the 80s has now long since failed. So what we find every time this carriage comes in is that gradually more and more rot is forming around these areas and it lets quite a lot of water inside and has damaged the upholstery. We're also getting to the point where the doors are now starting to suffer quite a lot. Each time they come in they either need the bottom rails looking at and, and this time we had to replace large sections of the upper section of the door, uh, take the hoods off, renew some of these rails and graft in new sections of the styles. Carriage is it's 40, getting on for 40 years old now and in theory that shouldn't be very long for a carriage but this, this one is now becoming quite a heavy maintenance problem for us. Uh, it's also got new drop lights going into this one um, and we've just re-upholstered the cushions obviously because of the water damage. It's about a day or two off being complete, windows just need cleaning, uh, last little bits need doing and then this carriage will leave the workshop. So we're here inside the Welsh Highland Heritage Railways replica Pickering carriage. Um, I believe it dates, the original was built in 1904. I'm sure there'll be people that will correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, so this is a replica of that. There's nothing original in this carriage. Um, we started it late on 2019 and now it's literally just a, a few weeks away from completion. We've got to finish things like the doors. There's uh, wood graining to do and then there's the fittings to put on the doors. Uh, we've got to just finish the mechanism for the, the removable seats for the wheelchair accessible area and there's a few little fittings on the outside to put on, clean through, and then it should be going for testing and uh, trials in the next few weeks. Um, this carriage, uh, being for the Welsh Island Heritage, they, they requested that it had a dual brake system on it so that it, that it had air and vacuum so it can run with any of their stock or any of our stock. So this carriage has got uh, an air system and a, a vacuum system, which of course has meant we've had to work out ways to join things together for the likes of the communication. Um, that has also meant that we've had to put the dual braking on the outside. This is not entirely incorrect because if you look at the photographs, they, one of them at least was certainly dual braked at one point. All right, we're stood next to the Ravenglass and Estdale's third carriage that we're building for them. Um, this is going to be a, a posh carriage, very similar to the first carriage we built, the observation carriage. Um, this is called an events carriage. Um, it's going to be disabled, accessible, so you'll be able to get a wheelchair into, into the two compartments, hence the double doors on the one side. It's also got some verandas at the two ends, uh, and the intention is to have drop-down windows at those two ends so they can become part of the um, compartment. It will also have drop down windows in the middle here so you can actually have a big function in the whole carriage. Um, it's going to have side lighting uh, and spot lighting once again similar to the the observation carriage and the seats will be the same big you know the plush bucket seats that we had in the OBS. Uh, we've just started work on it, so the floor is the first thing that's gone in and the cabling has now gone in. Um, we will next work on getting the ceiling in. It's obviously easier to do that and put the insulation on before we put the outer skin on. And then um, we'll move on to doing the lower body work and the window framing. We're looking at June or July for finishing this, um, depending on what other work we've got to fit in around. All right, this is um, small Birmingham, or otherwise known as Bug Box, number one. Um, it's actually a replica, mostly. Uh, the only original bits are these four corner pieces on it. Um, it was rebuilt in 1990, or built in 1996. Uh, and while it's had a, a few coats of paint over the years, it's not had very much attention at all. So this winter we've given it a fresh coat of varnish and done some repairs to it, um, make the doors operate properly again. And now um, we've got a volunteer who's volunteered to get the inside painted, uh, which again hasn't been touched since it was first built. 
So it's going to go into a, a white ceiling, the butter, butter colour ends and seat and the apple green lower sections. So it'll bring it in line with the other 30s liveried carriages. Uh, this is top end observation carriage 123, which was previously bottom end observation carriage 101. Um, so it was turned around about 10 years ago and at that point we took the guards van out of it and um, it was downgraded to third class. Uh, it's got the advantage in there it would fit two, two wheelchairs in one area. Um, it was deemed life expired at that point um, but we felt it wasn't so we did the work to it and it's given us another 10 years. Um, it's now got to the point where this end of the carriage, which is still the original framework, um, is now suffering. So we've brought it back in and volunteers are working on rebuilding this end of it. Um, the half, do half doors that were here we're going to actually take away and we'll put a framework in here. We will add a half door in here so the wheelchairs can go in so it will actually end up being identical to sister carriage 102. Uh, this removes a risk of half doors coming open by people messing with the locks which is never a great idea um, and we'll also put a plastic roof over it this time because we've had serious problems with water ingress through the roof um, once again it, it is a volunteer project so it's it's got no time scale on it it'll get finished when we when we can finish it and obviously with the covid situation that's been a bit difficult allowing volunteers into the workshop they are now coming back and Hopefully this will make good progress again in the next few weeks. Obviously you can see the, the framework, the new timber work has been started. Uh, the end has already had the outer skin reskinned, um, and that's now ready for paint. A canvas is here for the roof and we're working on stripping the paint off the cream so we can actually assess how much of the old repairs need to be re-repaired re again or where there might be water getting in it, we've not been able to see because the paint's been covering it. Um, yeah, it's, it's as and when, this one, as and when. Um, carriage 39, this is a replica of the Hudson toast racks that the railway used to have pre-closure. Um, this one dates back to 1992 or thereabouts, um, built by Winston in, up in Penryn, Diedroth at the time. So it's not done too badly, but um, unfortunately there's a few constructional problems in that <laughs> water has got in behind the angle and the, the, the steel plating there and it's causing substantial rust and corrosion down the posts on all of them. Um, this has resulted in several of the door bits rust jacking outwards and has caused problems with the with door latches. Um, we've also got a design issue with the doors in that the top of the doors have got a curved top to them uh, and there's a head trap area if somebody was to have a, a, an epileptic fit or a stroke or something like that so we're going to deal with that issue as well um, it's going to get a new new floor new end boarding because that's looking rather sorry for itself as well um, and we'll just correct a few of the little details that aren't quite right for it as a replica while we're doing that um, we are planning to reuse these, so we won't be altering these um, in any particular fashion. Order to get all, of course, order to get all of this apart, we've got to take the seats out, so it's pretty much full stripped down. Um, we are hoping to finish this sometime around Easter or shortly afterwards, but of course it depends on how how well progress is made on it. All right, we're just we're underneath 39 at the moment. Um, it's not an opportunity most people get to see under here, so I thought we'd uh, just show you. Um, to get all the floorboards off, every single one of the bolts has got to be freed off, um, and there's 80 odd of those. Um, not all of them are going to be accessible because we've got things like the vacuum cylinder in the way. Um, I know, getting past the bogey sides is going to be quite difficult as well, um, although we are getting there. Uh, another thing we're also going to do is actually replace the running boards on this one. They're quite, quite rotten at the two ends, uh, so they're going to get some new, new boarding put on at the same time. So when we replace all this stuff, uh, the new material is all going to be in stainless steel. So we hope not to have a repeat of this 
corrosion problem we're having here uh, and very much so on the inside. Um, the door doors will be the same. The doors will all be in stainless as will all the fixings that hold it all together. So we, we hope that that will give it a quite a long future, we hope. Uh, yeah, so this is the next one. All right, we're in uh, one of the Welsh Highland saloons at the moment, uh, 2048. Um, so this is the first of the prototype of the partitions we're going to fit to the Welsh Highland carriages and possibly the Festinian ones in due course. Um, so we've got the plastic screen and then we've got a dowling to, to one reinforce the edge of the plastic but also give some stability to it. A lot of stainless steel brackets. Um, everything's pretty much bespoke so it's a pain in the backside in that we've got to modify things to fit the carriages because none of them are standard. Um, this should help us double the capacity of the Welsh Island carriages and earn much needed extra income. Um, so these are the next, one of the jobs to do in the next few weeks. Second set going in. The two axle boxes weigh as much as this.
Yeah, Dom. Hmm? Let's see into the firebox here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to break it.